Hello, my friends. How's it going? It's Sunday evening. It's dark outside because it's the nighttime. That's how that works. It's also the weekend after Thanksgiving, so I ate a lot of food. Probably more than I should have, but that's besides the point. That's not what we're talking about tonight. Tonight, we are going to be talking about why you need a computer science degree if you're going to be a software engineer. I know it's an unpopular opinion, but it's true. So guys, stick with me. Before we jump into everything, I'm gonna give you guys a quick disclaimer, because I think I rocked the boat with, with that statement earlier about needing a computer science degree, so I wanna backpedal a little. No, that's actually not true. I'm not gonna backpedal. I'm not gonna backpedal. But I am gonna say this as a disclaimer. It is possible to get a job coding or being a software engineer or programmer or whatever you wanna call it without a computer science degree. It's 100% possible. There's plenty of other examples out there and walkthroughs of people who have done it, exactly how they did it. I did it, I don't have a computer science degree and I code, I'm a software engineer for a living. However, what I wanna say, and this is a big however, you're really shooting yourself in the foot if you don't get a computer science degree. You're really making it hard on yourself. And this is something you might not realize right away because yeah, it's possible to go pick up a coding language in a couple of months and just learn the bare basics and, and go get kind of an entry-level position doing that. But if it's a career you're interested in or something you're interested in staying with, that's not going to cut it. Eventually, you're going to hit a wall and you're going to realize there's a lot of stuff you don't know. And when you hit that wall, one or two things are going to happen. You're either going to realize maybe this isn't for you and give up, or you're going to bite the bullet and realize that knowledge that you never spent the time investing in early on, you're going to have to invest in now. So first things first, what is the big reason that comes up for, for why you need that degree? And the resounding thing for me has been, and this is, it's taken me a long time to realize, you are going to have some serious holes in your knowledge if you don't have the computer science degree. So what do I mean by that? What do I mean you're gonna have holes in your knowledge? I mean, there are going to be a lot of topics that you know, if you just did a boot camp or you taught yourself a programming language and, and did some kind of pet projects, there's gonna be a lot of things you just don't know about. You don't understand how they work. In a lot of cases, you probably won't even know they exist. Some of the topics that come to mind for me in you know, going back and trying to retroactively fill in gaps in my knowledge were topics like computer networking and distributed systems and operating systems was a big one that opened my eyes to a ton of stuff I didn't understand. And I'm not even talking about very specific knowledge here on, on you know, very, very specific type of things, guys. I'm talking about the broad strokes, the foundational understanding of the discipline of computer science. And that's kind of what a computer science degree program or curriculum is designed to give you, the broad strokes on that. It's designed to give you a smattering of a bunch of topics you're going to need to be successful as a software engineer. And so what you'll realize if you didn't spend the time to get that degree in the first place or you decided to go to the self-taught route is that you're going to need to fill in that knowledge eventually, especially as you get into you know more senior level roles and roles that are more demanding on the types of software you're writing. And yeah, that's just one of the biggest things I've noticed more than anything is, is so many holes in my knowledge that I've, I've had to go back and sort of fill in with self-study. And, and the trick with that is self-study is hard, guys. It's, it's hard to motivate yourself to, to study these types of topics. If you're interested in them, that'll help for sure. Like, you know, operating systems, I was extremely interested in. So the book that I was reading, it's actually called, um, I want to say Operating Systems in three simple steps and uh, I'll link to that because it's a really good book if you're interested in the topic. Yeah, if you're interested in them, it'll, it'll help a lot in, in your studying, but there's nothing quite like the classroom environment and just being surrounded by a bunch of people that are studying the same things to uh, get you motivated to actually work on the thing. And that's one of the downsides of self-study, I think, is that you're, it's really on you to, to self-motivate and that's really difficult. Yeah, so missing out on a lot of that foundational knowledge was just really hard for me, especially as I started working on more and more complex and demanding systems. Um, you know, I just, at, at my last job, thinking through some of the, the problems that I was presented with, I was just kind of outclassed, to be honest, with, with some of the stuff I had to solve because I didn't have the tool set or the bag of tricks that I needed to solve a lot of these problems. I, you know, didn't understand much about things like you know, how a thread works in an operating system and just getting a, just a taste of how that works was super, super helpful for being able to engineer better solutions. 
Yeah, honestly, before I started spending some time investing and, and going back and thinking like, okay, maybe I should actually study some of these computer science topics that I never really studied when I, I learned how to program, um, was just realizing, man, I am not nearly as competent of an engineer as I thought. Like there's so many things I missed out on here. Experiencing that is, is pretty eye-opening. It's humbling and you start to gain a lot more respect for um, people who have put in the work and you know, th things like that. Yeah, you know, if all, all you ever want to do is know how to display data in a pretty way in a UI, that's, that's one thing. There's a million tutorials out there online for how to do that, and you can pick that up pretty quickly. But if you really get more into, you know, engineering new and complex systems, you're just not going to be able to go very far, or you're going to, you're going to run into a lot of, a lot of roadblocks and headaches if you don't have some of that foundational and problem solving knowledge that you gain doing a computer science degree. So that kind of brings me to my next point. And that's that by not doing an actual, and honestly, I would extend this to say not just computer science degree, but not doing a science or engineering focused degree um, as sort of a prerequisite to being a software engineer, you're gonna miss out on years of problem solving on, and, and developing your problem solving ability. And that's, that's really what we're doing as engineers. We're solving hard problems. Um, and you know, guys, I'm not talking about like not knowing how to do something in JavaScript or Python. And it's been done a million times before. So you can just go Google for the solution or go on Stack Overflow and find the solution and just, you know, effectively copy paste the code that you find. I mean, yeah, that's fine in some circumstances. And I'm not knocking that because I do it a lot, but um, being able to actually solve new problems and you know apply your engineering intuition that hopefully you've gained from doing a, an actual degree program to, to new problems is, is huge. Without the degree and without developing that problem solving ability, you are only ever going to be able to go so far. Yeah, so just to give you guys some examples on that, and these are ones that I've noticed that I just thought were super cool, and like they're, they're you kind of have to pay attention for them, but just in going through studying some of the topics that I've studied, I've just, I've realized like, wow, I've really gotten better at a, at a lot of these sort of areas. And one is like, one of my favorite, favorite examples is thinking about, you know, in a typical discrete math class that you take, you might take, um, you know, you might spend at some point in that class just studying the topic of Boolean algebra and just working some of the problems and studying that topic has given me amazing intuition for like estimating the complexity of a problem that I'm working for. Being able to think in those sort of terms just gives your brain this ability to sort of reason through like how complex is this problem and, and give you an idea for what you're facing. Whereas, you know, without studying that topic, I just didn't even have the frame of reference to think about those those types of things. Another really good one, and this is this is honestly one of my favorite um, courses that I've take, taken or just subjects that I've um, studied is computer networking and, and how the, you know, a computer network is built and how the internet is built. Um, really studying sort of the fundamentals of that and how everything works gives you incredible intuition for being able to troubleshoot issues that you might have working on, you know, a large scale system. I think that topic also gives you a good frame of reference for understanding how data is sent between two different computers in a network and, and where things might go wrong. And, you know, maybe how you might build your own networking protocol to build your own system. Those are things that you're just not gonna know unless you spent the time to study that, you know, in, in a degree program or, or through self-study if, if that's the route you choose to take. But what I'm trying to highlight is that just studying a programming language or learning how to write code is such a small, small portion of, of the battle that will only get you so far if you don't have the fundamental knowledge to go along with it. All right, guys, that's about all I had for you tonight. I just kind of wanted to share my thoughts on, you know, what my experience has been like as a self-taught software engineer and, and doing that for a couple of years and then eventually kind of having to go back and study a lot of the topics that, that I neglected by, by going the self-taught route. Um, and, and how studying those topics have, have helped me a lot as, as an engineer.
you know, I think if software engineering is something that you're passionate about, you kind of owe it to yourself to, to study the computer science curriculum, either through doing a degree program or self-study if you're the type that can motivate yourself well enough to, to get through some of the harder topics. Either way, let me know what you thought about the video. If you liked it, you didn't like it, please let me know, leave me a comment, and be sure to subscribe if you're looking to see more content like this. All right, guys, have a good night. Peace out.